So this study was looking at the two different ways to provide pulmonary blood flow for the Norwood operation, uh, the right ventricle to pulmonary shunt compared to the sort of the traditional modified blalac taustic shunt. And what they did was take a group of patients that were non-randomized but matched using propensity matching. And then they compared the outcomes both in terms of uh, transplant-free survival, uh, tricuspid valve function, and right ventricular function. And what they found is that there was a benefit to the right ventricle to pulmonary shunt uh, over time. Well, I think if you look at the whole body of literature, um, this is a relatively large non-randomized trial. There was the randomized trial, and there are lots of other non-randomized pieces of literature out there that I think are all additive to the body to help us understand what's the proper way to go about it. And I'd say right now the, the jury is still out. I think a lot of our outcomes that we're interested in are much longer term, things like the function of the ventricle. What we worry about with the right ventricle to pulmonary shunt is that we have to make a hole in the ventricle. And this is the one good ventricle that the kid has for the rest of their lives. And so I think a lot of the answers will come and as we continue to follow these cohorts out over time. So right now I think it's a bit of dealer's choice. Um, there may be subtle suggestions that one may be better than the other for subgroups, but it's far from proven. So I think right now, as a surgeon, you can be justified in using either shunt. How do you make the decision on what shunt to use? I think there's some dogma out there that with the right ventricle to pulmonary shunt, if you have maybe a little bit less experienced ICU, they may have a little smoother ICU course. I think that um, it's been seen that they have maybe a little bit less pulmonary artery growth in the right ventricle to pulmonary shunt group and all those things you sort of factor in as a surgeon or as a clinician um, into your decision making. Uh, so I think right now you sort of tailor it to your resources, your experience, and your patient. Do you uh, personally tend to favor one shunting technique over the other? I do. I tend to use the right ventricle to pulmonary shunt right now. Um, you know, although there are not statistically significant differences between the two, uh, certainly this newer study would suggest that it's a benefit farther out. And even in the single ventricle reconstruction trial where there's not a statistically significant difference, the curve still shows that there's a benefit to it, although not scientifically uh, different. Doctor, what do we know about long-term ventricular function uh, between these two shunts? Do we know much? at this point about differences between them? So you have some worries perhaps with each shunt. With the modified blood lactosic shunt early on, you have some coronary steel where that shunt will actually pull blood away from the coronaries and can adversely affect your ventricular function. On the flip side, with the right ventricle to pulmonary shunt, we have to make a hole in the ventricle. Um, some of that may be improved. Uh, during the SVR trial, I started doing sort of a dunking technique rather than making a relatively larger hole in the ventricle and sewing the shunt to the uh, outside of the heart, making a smaller hole and actually pushing a supported Gore-Tex shunt into the ventricle to minimize the amount of hole we'd have to make. And some other groups, notably Milwaukee and Boston, have since started doing that. So that's another interesting cohort to look at as well. Um, is it possible that, yes, the right ventricle to pulmonary shunt may be detrimental and that you make a hole in it, but are there ways to minimize that effect? And how's that technique you've developed uh, work working for you? Uh, it works very well. Um, and as I said, some other groups have, have also started using it. It's, it's also very quick. Um, there tends to be a lot less bleeding than the traditional anastomosis of sewing the shunt to the heart. Um, so I think there's a number of benefits to it. Where do you think the field is headed um, in terms of uh, shunt selection? at this point? I think what, what's going to happen is we will continue to follow these children over time. Uh, we are about to come out, at least from the SVR trial, with the six-year data. We're beginning to plan for the 11-year data, which will allow us to do things now that they're older, uh, like things like exercise them, get MRIs on all the children, which will give us a really good look at the right ventricular function. Uh, we'll be able to do neurodevelopmental testing. Now that they're school-aged, we'll be able to assess them in lots of different ways that we haven't been able to uh, previously. So as we continue to study this really important cohort over time, I think some of the answers will come forth, and it may be the answer is that either is equivalent.